The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name's Caleb and in today's episode, we're going to attempt to solve the problem of me not drinking enough water. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. I know I don't drink enough water. I drink coffee all day long, but it's just not the same. My problem is that I'll go to the kitchen, fill up a glass of water or a water bottle, bring it back to my desk, and then just completely forget about it for the rest of the day. What I'm thinking is I need some sort of reminder to remind me to pick up the water bottle and take a drink. And what better way to do that than for this device to be super annoying? What I'm thinking is a battery-powered microcontroller with a, an accelerometer in it that can monitor the actual motion of me taking a drink of water, and that's the only way I can satisfy it, so I can't just shake it or something to make it turn off. The annoying part will be flashing lights, a vibration motor, and a piezo buzzer, so it lights up, buzzes, makes sound, and it's just a terrible thing until I take a drink of water. So let's dig into the design and see if we can come up with such a device. Sometimes I like to challenge myself on a project, and in this one I decided to put a constraint in the design of not using any screws. I'll have to figure out how to hold the PCBs in place, the battery, and the enclosure held together without using any screws. This should be fun. Uh, this is my awesome mock-up of the battery. It's dimensionally accurate, but it doesn't look so hot. This part here, of course, is the Adafruit PowerBoost 1000, and the wires come out of the bottom of the battery here, and I'm gonna shorten them up a little bit so that it can plug right into that. And to hold all of this together, this is what I came up with. It's got a compartment for the battery to sit in, and then another part that the power boost sits on, and hopefully that is just tight enough that the battery will slide in and hold it there. And you can see these little pegs are what's going to hold the PCB onto that. And if it's not good enough, I can put a little bit of hot glue on there, and it should keep it on. These ears here on the side are for the uh, elastic that's going to wrap all the way around the bottle, connect to the other side. And you can see on the back here, it's very flat. That's not going to rest up against the bottle very well. So I designed this little piece. It's got this profile in it that should fit any kind of water bottle. And these grooves or slots here, I'm going to put some hot glue in there to give it a little something to bind on. The top cover that's going to go on this will snap into these little grooves here. You can see it's a little half circle, and then the top of it, there it is, will just kind of snap in there. So that's what it will look like. Let's take a look real quick at the other electronics. Here we go. We've got the Arduino Nano here, which is going to clip onto the top part of the case. This is the PZO element, the vibration motor, and the annoying blue LEDs. Put it all together, that's what it should look like. With the charging port on the side here that plugs into the power boost, and a programming port here so I can update code on it if I need to. And this hole up here, I didn't model the switch, but there's gonna be a little toggle switch that will right connection from the battery to the power boost if I want it to be full power off and not just in a waiting state. So that's it. Kind of looks like a little little fella. The microcontroller for this project is going to be an Arduino Nano 33 IoT. And I chose that because I haven't got to use one yet and I wanted to. And the other part is it's got an accelerometer and gyroscope already built into it and I won't have to use some other part inside the project. This project will be battery powered and for that we're going to use a 1.2 amp hour 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery from Adafruit. This is quite a big battery and it should get me through a whole day no problem. Speaking of power, I'm going to use the Adafruit PowerBoost 1000. 
These things are great. It's going to boost that 3.7 volts up to 5 volts, and it's got a charge controller built in. So just plug it into USB power and it'll charge. These next three parts I like to call the annoyers because that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to annoy me until I take a drink of water. The first one is a PZO buzzer and it's just gonna beep and be terrible until I take a drink of water. For the next annoyer, there's actually two parts. It's two three millimeter LEDs that are gonna flash. And the reason these are annoying is that they're blue LEDs, which is my absolute least favorite color LED. The last of these annoyers is a vibration motor. It's just gonna shake and vibrate and be generally annoying. I can't stand it on my phone, so I thought it'd be great in this. This setup's gonna be way easier to test once it's in the enclosure and it's all put together. If I try to test it all on a breadboard, then the accelerometer that's in the Arduino won't be in the right orientation for, uh, you know, if I have to do any kind of calibration or even testing the tilt in the right axis. So I'm gonna lay it all out on the breadboard first just to make sure that all of my outputs work. And that's the lights, the buzzer, and the vibration motor. Uh, if I have any issues with the accelerometer, it's only gonna be in the Arduino itself. So we're gonna lay it out here first with some very minimal code just to see if it works. Got all the parts laid out, let's do it. That's the easy stuff with the PZO element and the two LEDs. The motor, however, is a little trickier to set up. Uh, it needs a little more current than the GPIO port output, so we're gonna pull power straight off of one of the power rails on the Arduino and use a transistor to switch it. Let's get that. Okay, so I have a very simple sketch here, just to test. All it's doing is digital write everything on, delay, digital write everything off. It's basically blank, but I'm using all four of these pins. Yeah, let's write it, see what happens. There it goes. Flashing, this is going. Awesome, so now at least I know that this stuff works and I can print the case, get it all in there and write the actual code and get to some testing. Right on. I wanted to take a moment to show you the post-processing that happens on some of these 3D prints. This part and the next part had quite a bit of support material and as you can see, it's pretty difficult to get out sometimes especially on this part where it left some artifacts that I didn't want to have on the final 3D print. You can see I kind of clean it up here with a knife and then uh, get to sanding on it so I can get it ready for some Bondo and paint. These files that I'm using are nail files that I got at a beauty salon. They come in all kinds of different grits and they're easy to get and they're really great. I love these things. The footage for the Bondo and the paint did not work out, so sorry for that. And the paint job didn't come out too well either because it was really windy that day. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! Now that we have everything breadboarded out and all the 3D parts printed, let's put it together so I can work on some code.
Here we are in the code, and the main thing that I want to talk about is that the code is all non-blocking, with one exception, which we'll see in a minute. But since there's the vibration motors, the LEDs, and the PZO buzzer, as well as reading the IMU constantly, it couldn't be blocking. I couldn't put delays in to blink the LEDs. It has to continue running and reading the IMU. So that was kind of new. I've done a little bit of that before, but uh, this is the first one that I've written that's almost completely non-blocking. Down in the setup, pretty basic stuff. Get some serial, set up, all, set up all of our pin modes, and set up the IMU. And I wrote a little calibration function, which I'll show you down here. And what this does is it reads for one second all of the data from accelerometer and the gyroscope, averages everything out, stores it into some global variables, and then instead of calling the IMU directly, I wrote these functions, which is get acceleration and get gyroscope, which does read it directly, applies the offsets, and then returns those. Basically have a zero point from wherever the unit was turned on. So when it's on the model in its vertical position, that's its new zero. This is something that I just discovered today. When I plug power into the power boost, it powers the Arduino. And I don't want that because I don't want this thing buzzing at me all night while it's charging. What I did was pulled power off of the USB input pin, built a little voltage divider to knock that down to about 2.5 volts because the Arduino is a 3.3 logic device, and then read it on a digital read here. And when that is high, that means that the battery is charging. Just return and it'll bypass all of the rest of the stuff here. We have our drink timer, which is gonna set no drink to true. And then all the way down here, if no drink is true, then we turn on all of the annoyers, otherwise we turn them off. And there's two states for this. The first state is I've picked up the bottle and I'm bringing it to my face. <laughs> the reason I did that is I didn't want the thing beeping in my ear while I'm taking a drink. So the, during the first second, it's gonna turn off the PZO element or PZO buzzer. And then after three seconds, we're gonna turn off all of the annoyers and reset everything. And then here's the one exception for the blocking. I give a 10 second grace period after you've taken a drink so you can finish taking a drink, set it down, and all that jostling around isn't gathering more data, throwing off any of the values. Since it's gonna go off about every 15 or 20 minutes, 10 seconds doesn't matter in there really. And this is kind of an interesting way that I had to get that data and figure out how long I was tilting it. Down here, we have get pitch. And what I discovered when I first started coding this a week or so ago was that when I started measuring in one axis, that if I rotated the bottle 90 degrees, that wasn't valid anymore. So this just reads all three axes and determines a pitch based on all three of them. And that's what I'm doing here. And for the timing, I put it all into a circular buffer. Where is that? There's a circular buffer with 30 elements in it. And I end up doing a total on that to figure out if I should increase a count. And that's where this tilt count comes from. And if you have any more questions, you can always hit me up on the Element 14 community. And you get a, my playlist for this code, which might be fun. Here we are in the portion of the video where we get to see if this thing actually works or not. I've got it set up on a 30 second timer right now instead of the 10 or 15 or 20, 30 minutes? I'm not sure, actually. I haven't thought about how long in between drinks it should be. But really, I'm just rambling now, waiting for the 30 second timer to run out so I can test it and see if it works. So any minute would be great, or any second even. Hey, and there it goes, let's try it. Oh, 
All right, it worked. Now it's in its 10 second grace period and when that runs out, it will start the 30 second timer all over again. So that's awesome, it works. And the only thing I have to do now is reflash it with a new drink interval on it, which I have no idea. Why don't you let me know in the comments what you think it should be? Well, that's all we have for today. I am super pleased with the way that it came out and that it actually works. The design constraint that I put in about not using any screws worked out really well. It all clips together and there's no screws in it. I had to work through a couple of small issues, first being that I hadn't worked with non-blocking code very much in Arduino, so I got to do that and learned a lot in that process. And the other was the Arduino coming on while it was charging. And that was just solved with a simple voltage divider and a digital read on the Arduino itself. So what do you think? How long should I wait between drinks of water? How long should I set up the timer? 15 minutes, 20, 40, 30? I really have no idea. And also, if you were to build something like this, what's the most annoying thing that you could think of to put it on there to make you take a drink of water? Let us know on the Element 14 community at element14.com presents. We'll see you next time, and until then, keep making.